Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. What we're going to be discussing today in uh, this lesson is going to be uh, continuing where we uh, have been building in the last couple of instructional videos uh, talking about functions. Today's uh, video is going to be discussing how we determine the output value of a function. Now, it's a little bit misleading. Uh, because we're not looking for a particular value necessarily for the types of uh, problems that we'll be taking a look at, but uh, we will be uh, getting values for some of them and we will be getting expressions for some of them. Now, what this first bullet point is really talking about is, uh, while it's not outright saying it, what it's really talking about is we're getting into something called function notation. And that's basically saying when I have some function, uh, call it, let's just call it f of x, let's say it's equal to 3x. Well, function notation is uh, basically where I take something and I say, okay, I want x to be uh, 2 in this case. And I would say 3, and I would just substitute it in for x anywhere I have it in the problem and uh, say f of two would be six for this particular one. Now the first part of actually you know doing the substitution and putting it in taking whatever we have and substituting it in the function is really not an issue. It's the second one that seems just so easy and basic. Simplify it. That's where we are if we have issues it's where it's going to come from is uh, doing the simplification because that is where uh, the algebra skills are really going to play a role. Uh, so if, again, like I've explained in other, uh, in other lessons, if you are, uh, take your time and you're patient and methodical with your order of operations, then you should be in good shape. Uh, but it can really uh, be a hair puller for some of us because it can just get really frustrating if you uh, allow it to. So let's take a look at this function here. We have a quadratic function, 2x squared plus 3x. And what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate it for all of the expressions that you see uh, listed above it. Now, the numbers themselves uh, usually don't create too much of an issue. So here, if we say f of negative 6, basically we're going to take the function that we have and replace everything. Uh, where we see an x with a negative 6. So we would have something uh, kind of looking like this. And now we're going to really just evaluate it. Order of operations say take care of your exponents. So negative 6 to the second power, negative 6 squared, would be uh, 36 positive. And here we can go ahead and combine, multiply those, uh, negative 3, I'm sorry, positive 3 times a negative 6 would give me a negative 18. And uh, just keep going, see what we wind up getting. 2 times 36, that is 72 minus 18. And so that simplifies to just be 54. So f of negative 6 is equivalent to 54. No big deal. Even the next one, even though it has a fraction that we're going to uh, substitute into the problem, isn't that big of a deal. So if I say f of uh, 3 over 2, 3, then I will say 2 times 3 over 2 squared plus 3 times 3 over 2. And just so again, simplify. Doing your order of operations. 3 over 2 squared is going to give me 9 over 4. And uh, 3 times 3 over 2 is going to give me 9 over 2 when I work that out. Multiply the 2 to the 9 fourths. And, uh, well, the 2 and the 4, that just simplifies to be 9 over 2. So I get 9 over 2 plus 9 over 2. So that would be 18 over uh, 2, which would just be 9. So f of 3 over 2 simplifies to just be 9. 
Now, this is where things can get uh, a little more interesting if we are substituting an expression into the problem instead of a uh, number. That's where things can get a little bit more interesting with the algebra. So let's take a look at this one here. If we have f of 2c, well, what do we get? Well, here I'm going to say 2 times 2c squared plus 3 times 2c and see how uh, let's see how what happens so one of the common mistakes that uh, most students are going to make with this type of problem is right here in the very beginning the 2c squared most students are going to have a tendency to want to say uh, 2c squared is going to be 4c well, we're not just squaring the value of the number. We're not just squaring the 2. We're squaring the product of 2 and C. So that means I must square both of them. So this is going to give me 4C squared inside of the parentheses plus 6C to finish it out. Okay. So make sure that uh, this part right here, make sure you don't do that. Now, let's go ahead and uh, from here, as long as you've uh, used your exponent properly, uh, the rest of this isn't going to be too much of an issue. To 2 times the 4, that's going to give me 8c squared plus 6c. And at this point, neither of these are like terms. So that's as far as we can simplify that one. We can't take that one uh, to go any further. And uh, let's go ahead and pick uh, one more color here and get something else going. So let's try this last one. Here I have f of uh, c plus 1. And this expression, because of the addition uh, associated with it, is going to be a little bit more challenging than the last one, where it was just 2 times c. And so let's see how this one is going to uh, play itself out. So we're going to say c plus 1 squared plus 3 times c plus 1. Okay, now here, again, common mistake that students are going to have a tendency to want to make. Uh, c plus 1 squared does not equal c squared plus 1 squared. Uh, that does not work out that way. So here c plus 1 squared is c plus 1 times c plus c plus 1. And here, let's go ahead and distribute the 3, and that'll give me 3c plus 3. Uh, now let's FOIL the c plus 1 term. So that would give me c squared plus 2c plus 1 plus 3c plus 3. Now let's distribute the 2 into the parentheses. And that will give me 2c squared plus 4c plus 2 plus 3c plus 3. And now we can combine our like terms. There are no other c squared terms, so that's uh, all we get there. 4c's and 3c's combine together to give me 7c's. And then the 2 plus the 3 is a 5. And that is uh, about it for that one. There's no more like terms to simplify it any further. So that would be the final expression for C plus 1. Okay. So let's uh, go ahead and move to our next one. We're going to be doing this with a variety of uh, different types of functions. The first one obviously was quadratic. This one would be uh, kind of a combination of absolute value and rational because Obviously, with the absolute value, we, we can recognize that symbol right away. But with the variable in the denominator, we can also think of that as being a uh, rational expression. Now, here, this one is actually going to, even though this is a rational slash uh, absolute value equation, this is going to play itself out relatively nicely because uh, the absolute value expression isn't we're not adding, subtracting, or anything like that. It's just the absolute value of x over x. And because of that, uh, you'll see here as we work them out, it'll 
uh, simplify to be something relatively nice to work with. So here I'm going to say 4 times the absolute value of 3 over 3. Well, the absolute value of 3 is just 3. So I can replace the absolute value brackets with the uh, parentheses to be sure that we're going to multiply the 4 to a positive 3. And uh, what you're going to notice straight away is if you can multiply through the top and say 12 over 3, and that which is simplified to be 4, or you can just say 3 over 3 uh, simplifies to be 1, so I'm left with just 4. So h of 3 is just going to simplify to be 4. All right, so let's take a look at the next one. Negative 2 thirds still have a fraction. Uh, in this case, they're uh, giving us a negative 1, so that might uh, pose a 2 over 3. Make, ooh, just can't write today. Let's clean that up a little bit. And we'll say negative 2 over 3. And so substitute that number and 4 times the absolute value of negative 2 over 3 over negative 2 over 3. Well, the absolute value of negative 2 over 3 is just 2 thirds over negative 2 thirds. And what you're going to see, again, pretty clearly, uh, the 2 thirds here and the 2 thirds here, that just simplifies to be negative 1. So 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. And we're done simplifying that guy. So the algebra for this one really isn't uh, too crazy, nothing too weird about this. So let's take a look at the expression, see how that's going to change things. So if I say h of 3 times a, and stick that into the problem, so I'm going to say 4 times the absolute value of 3a over 3a. Well, whatever 3a is, if the absolute value of it, whatever it is, it's going to just be positive 3a and over 3a, and again, you'll see those will simplify and just leave me 4. So h of 3a is just another 4. And last one that uh, we're going to take a look at here is uh, the expression a minus 2. So let's say h of a minus 2, substitute that into the problem. I'm going to say 4 times the absolute value of a minus 2, oops, absolute value, over a minus 2. And again, here, whatever the difference of a minus 2 is, it's just going to be a positive number. So that will give me 4 times a minus 2 over a minus 2. And again, this expression and this expression simplify to be 1, so I'm left with 4 once again. So nothing really crazy even though we did have an absolute value with a uh, kind of a rational equation here because the absolute value isn't really doing anything we're just saying x whatever that is uh, they have a tendency to simplify with what we have in the denominator now if the expression in the numerator was something slightly more complicated even if it was just x plus one uh, they wouldn't have worked out quite so nicely but uh, well, in this case they did so here, it's, uh, we're changing it up a little bit. This isn't, uh, you know, any particular geometric uh, formula here. We can say that this is uh, almost like the uh, area formula for a cylinder. Uh, 2 pi r is obviously the circumference of a circle, and h is the height of maybe a prism or a cylinder of some kind. Uh, but it's not a true geometric formula, but uh, we're going to do kind of the same thing, just using the equation that we have, substitute the uh, various power or the various uh, numbers that we're working with. So g of 4, substituting that in for r, is going to give me 2 times pi times 4 times h. Well, the 2 and the 4 are going to give me 8 pi times h. And that's pretty much it. We could multiply 8 by pi and get, you know, some decimal number. But generally, in upper mathematics, we leave things in terms of pi, so we are not going to multiply the 8 and the pi together to get a decimal number, and we'll just stop there with that one. So easy. That one's done. So now let's take a look at uh, the second expression, where we're going to say 
3 over 2. There's that fraction again. They just won't leave us alone with fractions. So I'm going to say 2 times pi times 3 over 2 times h. And here, this one's going to work out pretty nicely again, because here, 2 over 2 would just simplify to be 1. So 1 times 3 would just be 3 times pi times h. And we're done with that one now. So let's pick a, another color here so we can keep everything kind of differentiated. And uh, go to the next one where we're going to substitute the expression 2c. So I'm going to say g of 2c is equal to 2 times pi times 2c. And oops, don't forget the h. So here the 2 and the 2 on the of the 2c, that'll give me 4 pi c h or 4 c pi h the, the order in which we multiply it doesn't really matter and uh, we're done with that one now so let's try the last one see if maybe we can get something slightly more challenging uh, with this one or because we have an expression that we're working with c plus 3 so let's say g of c plus 3 is equal to 2 pi times c plus 3 times h. Now, uh, this one may be uh, a little bit easier to see. Uh, the order, in again, the order in which we multiply doesn't really matter. So if I say 2 pi h times c plus 3, that might make it easier to see how we're going to actually multiply it together. So the 2, the pi, and the h, they're all multiplied together that really is just going to be one number at some point and that number is going to be multiplied or distributed into the parentheses so i'm going to multiply 2 pi h times c and 2 pi h times 3 so i'm going to get 2 pi c h plus 6 pi h and that's pretty much it for that one we're just distributing uh into the parentheses and we're done Okay, so let's try taking a look at this one. Now here, I can uh, kind of let you know that this one uh, could get a little crazy depending on what we wind up distributing or substituting in for x, but uh, let's see what we wind up with and take it from there. So p of 5 would become the square root of 4 times 5 minus 1. So 4 times 5, that's 20 minus 1, and 20 minus 1 is 19, and 19 doesn't have any perfect square factors, so that's pretty much as far as uh, we can take that one. We can't simplify the square root of 19 at all. So let's go to the next number, p of 3 over 2. There's that fraction. They just won't let us go with the fraction. So here if I say 4 times 3 over 2 minus 1, well, the 4 over the 2, that simplifies to just be 2. So 2 times 3 would be 6 minus 1. And that would just be the square root of 5. And 5 is a prime number. It definitely doesn't have any perfect square factors. So we're done. That's as far as we could take that one. So new color to keep things separate. And so now let's go to our first expression, 3a. So if I say p of 3a is equal to the square root of 4 times 3a minus 1, well, inside of the radical, we're going to say 4 times 3a, and that's going to give me 12a minus 1. And the 12a and the minus 1, those are not like terms, so we can't simplify it anymore. A uh, common mistake for something like this, uh, if we say 12a minus 1, we cannot simplify that. So, cannot simplify. Because, uh, kind of like with our, our order of operations, I have to uh, either be multiplying at some, time, at some point or simply have a single number. Uh, otherwise, we can't simplify the 12 by itself and say, uh, so this does not become 2, 
three a minus one. It doesn't work that way. So this is as far as we could take that one. And last but not least, oh, and I've already used blue. Let's make sure we pick another color here. Let's go back to purple. Let's take a look at our last expression, the a minus one. So if I say p of a minus one, say square root. 4 times a minus 1 minus 1 and again we'll kind of do our normal order of operations underneath the radical so I'm going to distribute and get 4a minus 4 minus 1 and we do have like terms here so I'm going to say 4a minus 5 and again that 4 even though the 4 itself is a perfect square because it's being multiplied to a whatever that is and then subtracted to 5 we cannot uh, try and take the square root of that. So in this case, we would say 4a minus 5 cannot simplify to be like, say, 2 radical a minus 5. Uh, it doesn't simplify that way because of the subtraction operation. Now here, uh, I can tell you that this one, while this is our last example, uh, is going to become slightly more complicated. Uh, very similar to, or in, in similar ways, it, it resembles the absolute value one that we had uh, earlier, where I had something over something. But the, the difference is that uh, we're now adding the 3 to uh, the numerator, rather than simply multiplying with the 4. So they're not going to simplify nicely from top to bottom like the other one did. So let's uh, take a look at what we have here. If I say p of 5, we're going to say 2 times 5 squared plus 3 over 5 squared. Well, 2 times 5 squared, the 5 squared becomes 25 plus 3 over 25. Now, again, a common mistake the students are going to do at this point is try and simplify the 25s from the numerator and the denominator, but we can't because before we can simplify, we have to take that 3 into account. We have to add all that stuff together uh, before we can try and simplify top to bottom. So don't try to simplify the 25 and the, 20, the 25 on top and the 25 on bottom. So 2 times 25, that's 50. 50 plus 3 is going to give me 53 over 25. And 53 over 25 don't have any common factors. So that fraction can't simplify, so we'll just stop and leave it there. Okay. Now let's take a look at the next one here. And I know I want to kind of give myself a little bit of room here uh, because as I work this out in advance, this one uh, is probably one of the more complicated of the uh, problems to kind of work out as far as the algebra is concerned. Um, well, let's just keep going the way I've been going, and we'll just... I know I'm going to run out of room as I go top to bottom, but I'll kind of move it up as we go. So let's say uh, p of 3 over 2. And so here we're going to say 2 times 3 over 2 squared plus 3 over 3 over 2 squared. So the 3 over 2 to the second power, the 3 squared is going to give me 9. The 2 squared is going to give me 4 plus 3 over 9 fourths again in the denominator. And again, just like in the previous example, the 9 over 4s don't simplify top to bottom. Uh, we can't do that until we have no more addition or subtraction. Uh, they all have to be equal as far as PEMDAS is concerned. We can't simplify until I take care of that addition. So the 2 over the 4, well, that's going to just simplify to be 9 over 2. So I'm going to get 9 over 2 plus 3 over 9 over 4. Oops, not 9 times 4, but 9 over 4. And so in the numerator, we do have uh, numbers that we can uh, combine together. So on the common denominator would be 2. So I would just recommend, say, on your calculator, say uh, 9 over 2 plus 3, and uh, when you do, you're going to get 15 over 2 over the 9 over 4, okay? Now, at this point, uh, again, maybe if you happen to have your calculator handy, 
you could just type that into your calculator and say put that you know depending on what calculator you're using you might be able to just type it in literally exactly the way you see it otherwise you might have to put the 15 over 2 in a set of parentheses and the 9 over 4 in a set of parentheses before you uh, when you're doing your operation but uh, otherwise if you don't happen to have a calculator I'm going to just carry this guy up here to the top uh, and just rewrite it again so we're at uh, P of 3 over 2 is equal to 15 over 2 over 9 over 4 okay well if we divide by 9 over 4 uh, we are ultimately really just kind of multiplying at some point a lot of times what we like to do when I say a fraction divided by a fraction uh, you know fraction divided by another fraction the 9 over 4 the easiest way to get rid of it is to multiply by the reciprocal because anytime I multiply reciprocals together I'm always going to get a 1 so like this 9 and that 9 simplify that 4 and that 4 simplify to be 1 and in the numerator this 2 and that 4 simplify to be uh, 2 over 9 and that 15 and that 9 would simplify to be 5 over 3 so that's going to just give me 5 times 2, which would be 10, over 1 times 3, which would be 3. And that is the final simplified answer. So I know fractions, they're not our friend, but uh, we can make them work for us because they're just numbers and we're people and we know how to do stuff like that. So let's take a look at uh, the next one here. So we're going to say... Uh, P of 3A is equal to 3A squared plus 3 over 3A squared. Again, common mistake for something like this is a lot of students will want to say the 3A squared is just going to be equal to 9A, but it's really 9A squared plus 3 over uh, 9 a squared and this 9a squared is a common denominator to both the 9a squared of the numerator and the 3 of the numerator so that's kind of like saying 9a squared over 9a squared plus 3 over 9a squared so here you can see anything divided by itself just simplifies to be 1 Oh, and I am totally, totally messing up. I forgot the 2. I forgot to put the 2 here. Oh, no. So let's fix this real quick because I don't want to have to redo the entire video for the oops for this one problem. So let's fix this. And let's just erase the whole thing. Okay, and start over from here. My apologies if you're paying attention and say, oh, hey, Mr. Pierce, you forgot the 2. Congratulations. So we're going to say 2 times 9a squared plus 3 over 9a squared. So, okay, now we can continue going. We can say 18a squared plus 3 over 9a squared. And finally now, kind of break it up. We can say 18a squared over 9a squared plus 3 over 9a squared. And the 19 and the 9, or the 18 and the 9 simplify to be 2. a squared and a squared just simplifies to be 1. So the 3 over the 9 simplifies to be a 1 third a squared in the denominator. And that's what we get for that one. Now we're kind of in a pickle. Let me see if I can squeeze this last one in on the, that right side there uh, and not, you know, really cram it and swear we can't read it. So let's see how this is going to work. So if we say uh, P of A minus 1 to be equal to 2 times A minus 1 squared plus 3 over A minus 1 squared. So here, uh, again, common mistake that students are going to want to do is they're going to want to say a minus 1 squared is equal to a squared minus 1 squared. 
but we have to uh, expand it out, and so we're going to say a minus 1 times a minus 1 plus 3 over a minus 1 times a minus 1, and then FOIL both in the top and the bottom. Now, the nice thing is that they're going to be the same, so here, a squared, or a minus 1 times a minus 1 is going to be a squared minus 2a plus 1, and then the plus 3 of the numerator, and in the denominator, a squared minus 2a plus 1. Distribute the 2 in the numerator, and I get 2a squared minus 4a plus 2 plus the 3 over the denominator. And finally, combine your like terms. So I have 2a squared minus 4a plus 5 over a squared minus 2a plus 1. Now here's the kicker, is that we would need to check to see can either the numerator or the denominator factor to simplify even further. Uh, but the nice thing is, uh, from well, perhaps it's a nice thing, maybe it's not because uh, we don't get to practice it, uh, we can't simplify either of those. Neither of those uh, equations are, well, the bottom one is factorable, but the top one is not. And because they both don't factor, we can't find a common factor to simplify anymore. And since we can't simplify anymore, we're done. So some of these, uh, as you can see, are going to be slightly more complicated than others. But if we maintain our uh, calm and cool heads, then we should be able to keep the uh, math to a minimum. So uh, make sure you have taken proper notes. If you have questions, make sure you write them down and address them to me in class. And uh, see you guys soon. Thanks.